Hi, I'm George Dick, and I'm going to show you how to operate the modified fouling index today. The first thing you're going to need is to grab a membrane sheet. Our membranes come in four different sizes, 50 kilodalton, 100 kilodalton, 800 kilodalton, or 0.2 micrometers. Today we're going to be doing it with the 50 kilodalton. First thing we're going to do is grab a Wattman glass microfiber filter. Uh, these filters are the size of the membranes that we need. So first thing we're going to do is just get one of them out. Now these are going to be disposable so we don't have to worry about touching the edges as we're not going to be using these for other testing procedures. So we're going to grab one of those, but we're going to try to be careful to keep the shape. We're just going to set that aside. We're going to unravel, unroll our membrane sheet here. As you can see, we've already had several cuts on this. And basically what we're going to do is lay the glass fiber filter on top of our membrane. Now very carefully, we're going to hold that down and take our scissors and cut it to the exact same shape. We cut around, rotate your hand around, and it's important that you don't touch the actual membrane side, which is the shiny side of the membrane. So we're going to put the fiber filter on that side and only touch the back end of the membrane. So this is our finished product. This is our membrane. The shiny side is our membrane side and that is the side that is going to be facing the feed water. Now over to cleaning procedures. All right, so we're going to come over to the hood for the cleaning procedures. Basically, we're going to grab a beaker, ethanol, and our membrane. So the first step is to lay the membrane in and to remember what side. Uh, you always put the membrane facing up because that will help me remember once it's exposed to the ethanol, it sometimes is uh, difficult to tell. And then we're going to add our ethanol solution to that. Just put just enough to cover the whole membrane and have a little bit of a solution in there. So I'm going to add just a tad bit more. Just enough to submerge the membrane in the surface. I usually swish it around once or twice to make sure that there is ethanol all throughout the membrane and now we're going to let that sit for five to ten minutes. After our five minute initial rinse it's time to clean, rinse off any excess methanol that would still be on the system so I generally give it one or two quick more rinses just as a precautionary and then we will take this over to the sink for cleaning. We're here for our rinsing stage so we're going to pour out the minimal excess ethanol that was from the cleaning process and take our deionized water line and flush it. Generally let this soak for just a little bit of time and then I will drain off the, the excess liquid. It isn't careful to ensure that you remember what side was the membrane because at this stage it is a little bit difficult to tell. From here I usually grab the membrane by the sides and give it a quick rinse straight with the deionized water. This is going to ensure that any ethanol is out, rinsed off of the membrane and does not wind up in the permeate. From here, we're going to ensure that the cleaning process was, in fact, satisfactory. And we have a blank membrane module, membrane holder, that we're just going to test. So with the O-ring in place around the ring, we are going to gently place the membrane on top of the O-ring ensure that it stays in place. This is the back of the membrane so you're allowed to touch the edges more. The back side. And then we are going to gently take it and screw in the top. Now it's important to make sure that the o-ring completely encompasses the membrane to ensure no potential leakage. Then we have a syringe that is always just filled up with deionized water and we're going to pump it into the system a little, just a little bit. From here we will now load the modified the MFI system in the syringe pump. So after rinsing we're late, ready to load the membrane with into the system. This is our syringe pump hooked up to pressure transducer to measure the transmembrane pressure. This is our membrane holder here. 
which is going to house the membrane and this is our permeate line to collect any permeate samples that we also wish to conduct. Normally before this test is done we'd already have the membrane open but I just wanted to show you the procedures to take off the membrane housing. First thing we're going to do is clamp onto the bottom ring, take our wrench onto the top ring and gently break apart. Sometimes it is stuck and does require more force to remove. After we have broken it free, we're just going to loosen it by hand. After removing the top of the membrane holder, we generally fill the membranes. The best way to do this is to withdraw on the membrane holder just to release some of the pressure that might be in the system and then simply unscrew from the membrane from the syringe holding unit. Once you get it off, just turn it to the side. Remove the syringes. So one, set those aside, and two. Now take the, either replace these with new syringes or clean the existing ones if it's not too fouled already. So gently place your syringes into the beaker and withdraw the entire contents up. And we're going to do this for both syringes. Now that we have filled up our syringes, we are going to grab the clip which holds it, which supports the syringes all the way to the bottom and gently place both syringes into the system. It is important that you lock the syringes into place. Then we will inject to a certain point, wherever is deemed necessary, where the syringe crossbar is able to fit into the housing bracket. Then we are going to put our crossbar and tighten it up. Now we're going to use our piping network and we're just going to attach it to the top on both of these and gently the reason why we do not tighten this completely is so that we can take the syringes and rotate them about their access point while keep still maintaining the proper distance that we need within the housing bracket. Now both of those membranes or the syringes are both completely attached to the pipe network and we're just going to tight it, finish tightening the crossbar and ensuring that all four points of holding on the bottom crossbar and on the top crossbar are still with it, holding on to the membranes. After we have attached the syringes, now it is time to load the membrane. As said before, we're going to put the shiny side down. First inspect the membrane housing unit to make sure that the O-ring is still flush against the ring. And then we're going to gently place our membrane onto the o-ring ensure that it covers all gaps and then we are going to attach the top of our membrane holding unit and slowly turn while we look through the top to ensure that the membrane hasn't fallen off of the o-ring so it looks like our membrane is still secure and now I'm just going to give it the final tightening by hand. After it's been tightened by hand, we are going to make sure that it is securely tight to ensure all pressure within the system does not escape. So we're going to clamp it, attach it with a wrench, and turn just a little bit just to ensure that it is very tight. Quicker startup. As the feed wire is only in the syringes right now and there's a lot of empty volume within the piping, we remove the feed pressure relief valve and press inject on the syringe pump. Now as you can see, the syringes are slowly moving up until we get a steady flow of waste wa water or a feed water into the, mem into the membrane unit and then we will reattach the membrane 
We are ready to start up the system. Ensure that your permeate line is into a container as it will begin. And we will start a two-step process, which is ensuring that we have correct flow for our feed tank, which is 0.2 milliliters per minute in the system, which is set there. We can change anything by going to the settings in the syringe pump. But since it's already set to 0.2 milliliters per minute, we will hit start. From here, it starts a time process of approximately four hours where feed water will be injected into the membrane at that constant rate. We also have to start up our Hoboware system for continuous data logging at this time.